Kia ora koutou. I'm Fiona McDonald and I'm just going to quickly run through uh, EOTC and Outdoor Education at Orange and point you in the direction of um, some of the guidance that sits on our website and also any questions that might come up. So just a few things for during the session. I thought this uh, whakatauki was particularly apt, uh, although the ocean does now seem to be um, getting a little calm around the waka and uh, we seem to have more of an idea about uh, where we're paddling. So hopefully that continues and we are able to uh, get out and about and really get some quality EOTC happening. So some overarching key messages around working at Orange um, for EOTC is just keeping an eye out on the ministry um, guidance. Uh, those updates um, are still coming through, particularly in the um, leaders bulletin. It's just keeping an eye out on any changes that are happening there. As soon as there's a change there, um, EONS um, make sure that comes out through the EOTC coordinators database as well. And then we'll update um, any guidance that we have that needs to be updated. Uh, another key message is just around um, doing what's reasonably practical or pragmatic. And I think we're getting better and better at working out what that is. Um, and just keeping on top of those public health measures. Really important um, with external providers to really have good conversations as well about what's happening when you're off site with an external provider. Uh, so really uh, with Orange, um, putting a real emphasis on um, staying home if you're unwell, uh, having good hygiene in place and really thinking about how you ventilate whatever space you are in or um, hopefully you're outside as much as possible and considering when mask use might be appropriate. Um, there'll be some places where you'll need masks um, like visits to the library, if you're doing a field trip to the supermarket, those types of um, external providers. Um, there'll be other external providers that have made some choices about mask use um, in their um, venue. And so that's why it's important to have those conversations. But also um, consider, you know, if you're just out and about in a public space, whether mask use um, might be appropriate um, in those spaces. Uh, physical distancing, obviously that's um, changed um, and there's still some encouragement around physical distancing, particularly um, when you're out and about in public, but no longer the requirements within groups for distancing. Already said a little bit about ventilation, you know, outside wherever possible. Uh, Bunk rooms are a good example of um, looking at how um, you get ventilation and how you decrease, decrease the risk of using um, bunk rooms and we've talked about just minimizing the time that students spend in um, bunk rooms on school camp. Um, and then when they're not in there, um, keeping them as well ventilated as you can. And if it's still warm where you are, um, you know, keeping those rooms ventilated. Um, obviously, as we come into winter camping, um, that gets a little bit trickier, and then that's when you really can think about reducing down the amount of time that is spent in the bunk rooms. Working with external providers, uh, they all um, need to treat students as vaccinated. Uh, mostly, there's no capacity limits, but again, that's um, where it's really important to talk to your provider and understand what requirements they either have themselves or are required by law to have. Um, and providers can still choose whether they want to take your booking or not. Um, but what they can't do is require students to be vaccinated. Form six in the toolkit is a really good um, checklist or way to work through um, your requirements and your agreements and record the discussions 
that you have with the provider so that you're really clear on what's going to happen um, if someone um, is some, um, suddenly symptomatic while they're away at an external providers, uh, what systems um, the provider has to manage that, uh, what cleaning they have in place, how they're going to deal with catering, all of those types of things. Um, you need a really good, robust discussion around so that you can agree how that whole health and safety plan is going to work for the event. And just a couple of things on the EONS website. Um, up on the top tab, you can see the EOTC through um, COVID-19. That's where all the resources um, for COVID-19 sit. Uh, also, um, they get popped into the news um, button, so you'll see them pop up there as well. Uh, that um, will take you to this page. You can see um, this is an old screenshot, but you can see this was last updated um, up the top in February, and that date will tell you exactly that, when it was last updated, so that you know you have the most current um, material. And there's a bunch of other stuff on here and links um, into all sorts of different things. Um, the ministry site, um, Sport NZ, if you're looking for advice around um, school sport, and then there's also a bunch of learning resources in there, um, kind of on mainly online stuff and ideas um, that have come from around and about the place. Um, I quickly mentioned Form 6 out of the toolkit, and you can find this off the EOTC management page. Um, you can see there the template and toolkit of forms off on the right hand side so you can go down there click in there and that will take you off to find the um, toolkit there's also the EOTC management zoom series um, sits in this um, space and now I've uh, got some question time but um, also just a quick reminder that um, for any EOTC management questions, you can use this email address um, to get a hold of me and ask questions, but also any COVID questions. Um, if you're not sure exactly or um, you just want a sounding board around whether um, your, what you've got planned is a pragmatic um, and practical response, then feel free just to get a hold of me through that email. Okay, thank you very much. I'll just 